What's going on guys, this is Coach Steven with 15 Points of Tennis. And in the last video we discussed the box, which is a position of strength when setting up and holding your shot. All right, now to recap, the box is great to help you really engage your shoulders through the, the shot and to activate and feel your core strength, okay, through contact. But you don't see all the pros with their arms out like this at all times. Now, again, if, if it's a, if this concept is foreign to you, please use a more exaggerated box when you're training to really help you internalize the feeling of really engaging your muscles. But the, the point, guys, is is not the box in of in and of itself. The point is really to help you get the feeling of swinging hard and not just fast. Okay, and here's what I mean by this. So. When I was a junior player, at home in the living room, I had this, this mirror. You know, I'd like to practice my shadow swings and, and check my technique. And although my technique looked decent, I would swing like this. It would be very light. There is no muscle engagement. Right? And worse off, I would actually try to hit the ball like that in a real match, like I was shadowing and doing a shadow swing in the air. Okay, and there's a big difference here. When you do a shadow swing like this, there, there's nothing there, you're just swinging, there's nothing because it's just air, right? Compared to when you're actually rallying or hitting a real ball, live ball, that ball has weight to it, okay? So when you shadow, there's a difference between swinging like this with no muscle engagement versus swinging hard, right? Even though I'm not swinging fast, I'm pushing hard. It's like I'm pushing up uh, a weight. There's, I'm engaging my muscles through the shot. And I know, guys, I'm just talking about this feeling, and I understand just watching you know, at home on your laptop, it's hard to really capture the feeling, but when I shadow hard or swing hard, what I want to feel is if you put your hand right here on your, your core, right, you're, you should feel at contact right here. You're driving from your core. You should feel that. You should feel your shoulder really pushing through the ball at contact right here, and your forearm, this, the last you know, part of the chain, you should feel that snap and that turning of the forearm, finishing at contact. So again, one, two, three, I'm feeling this every single time I hit the ball. And now I'm engaging my muscles and hitting with strength. And I believe that from a strong box position, position right here, it's much easier to feel those muscles compared to if you had limp arms like this and then just using your wrist to whip the racket around. So whether you're shadowing at home and practicing your swing or whether you're hitting in a match, we're rallying. Even if I shadow slow, I should still be able to feel my core and my muscles. And even if I'm just rallying and I'm swinging at like 20 to 50 percent speed, you should still be able to hit the ball with some decent pace because you're not hitting light like this. You're really engaging your muscles uh, through every single shot. So try this next time, especially if you're warming up. What is the hardest you can hit the ball swinging slow right the racket head speed hair that you see not very fast anyone can pretty much swing at this pace now if i hit the ball early like this see how I, I don't get any power i have to wait for the ball to come into my strike zone in order to really feel my core strength like those last three were good that solid right there i waited for the ball so you have to catch the ball in your strike zone of course there i'm reaching Right, but again, the theme of swinging hard, not just fast. Now, I do have some pace to work with, obviously, but you know, you can even hit the ball like this in a match if you really wanted to. Like that last one was maybe my best one. Okay, right there, that's slow and strong. Now, transitioning to the volley. The box as a concept becomes even more important and more crucial. All right, so I'm gonna have the student here get into his ready position like he's gonna hit a volley with a nice strong box position. And I'm gonna have him, I'm gonna test his box by applying pressure. So I'm gonna push right here, okay? So it's not bad, so I can feel the resistance of him pushing back against the pressure, right? that's gonna test how strong it is. So that's not bad, obviously, you can see his elbows out like this instead of collapsing in. But what I'm gonna experiment with is have him get his arms from here 
to up here. So raise his arms just a little bit higher. So raise your arms a little bit higher. Now I'm gonna actually push. I'm pushing harder even. And there's, there's way more strength and way more resistance. And you know, if this kind of looks weird on video, have someone do this to you at home to, to test it out. But this is a great lesson on maintaining strength and structure as you volley. So volleying out here versus here, is, there's a big difference. Again, on the back end, here versus here. I never want to be reaching, right? But you see, when I'm out here, I, I have much more access to my strength as opposed to when I'm here. So this goes for really all your shots, guys, okay? Not just the volleys. When you're, you know, you should know what muscles you're using on your different shots. So, for example, a reverse forehand, like like Rafa, like that, like, hey, that's a lot of bicep, right? On your serve, it's a lot of tricep going up to the ball. On your volleys, obviously a lot of core strength, as with every shot, but volleys, it's a lot of uh, shoulder right here, shoulder and forearm. See, look, shoulder and forearm, right? Maintaining that strong structure, that box we talk about. Now, we're going to, in the demo, put the student's strength to the test. And I'm going to have him actually have one hand behind the back as we do this drill and keep his arm out and straight as possible. And the arm behind his back, it's going to take away his counterbalance. So he has to really use his core strength to stabilize. And keeping the arm out and straight, it's going to take a lot of shoulder strength to keep it out here. What you're going to see is the tendency for him to just drop the arm and drop the arm because here is a lot easier to hold it out than than here, when I was practicing this with my coach, he kept telling me, hold higher, higher, hold that arm higher. And in my mind, I'm thinking I'm holding the hand up here, but on camera, it looks normal. I'm just holding right here. So if, again, first time doing it, just double exaggerated, okay? So you can get the feeling of, of this. Now, before we begin the demo, okay, I'm gonna have him put his arms out just like this. I wanna just talk about and mention the, the, the leverage concept real briefly. I'm gonna press down on his arm and put the same amount of pressure. Okay, I'm gonna push right here. Okay, compared to pushing right here, right? So obviously the further from his center point that I push, the, the, more, the more he's gonna feel it, right? Just you know, the concept of leverage. And when, so when you're hitting the ball, and this goes for all your strokes, not just the volley, but hitting out here more extended, it's gonna force you to use a lot more shoulder a lot more core strength. And this goes for body types as well. Like, for example, you know, I'm a very uh, stock, I'm a much shorter, stockier body type. So for me, it's a little bit easier to stabilize. But if you have, let's say, a long, lanky Sharapova body, right, you're gonna get more leverage. But again, those body types, you need a lot more shoulder strength and core strength. You gotta go to the gym, hit the gym, put the work in to be able to stabilize out here. Okay, so really keep that in mind as you're doing these drills, as you're learning to hit with more strength. So here's those volleys with the one hand behind the back, really making him use his core strength and shoulder strength to keep that racket out in front. And notice how high I want him to keep that right hand and how straight I want him to keep that arm. Now look, he's sagging, he's sagging a little bit. I think I told him, get that arm up, get it up. Okay. See there, I want him to keep that racket up and never let that racket come down. Those last three were really solid. Now the backhand takes maybe double the strength. Just because the backside muscles, you don't use them that often. So you can see him sagging that arm already. Okay, that's better right there. That's a little bit better. Okay, that's a little bit more solid, keeping that arm up. When you hit volleys, it's easier just to slice them because it takes the pressure off from using your muscles. But if you want to be able to pop a volley hard and flat and have strong volleys to be able to put them away, well, you got to be able to learn to hit this volley as well, okay, with a nice strong box. Now, see my right arm sagging? I'm actually not doing that good of a job. This is a little harder than it looks. But try to see if you can do you know, 20, 30 in a row and keep that arm up. And like I said, I'm not doing the best demo here. As you can see, my arm is sagging down. I need to keep that arm up, right? So this is a really a great workout if you're practicing strength on that volley. And ideally, you want to hit pop that volley nice and flat 
and penetrate it through the cork. All right guys, so for the second part of this video, we're gonna pivot a little bit. I'm gonna rattle through a series of different concepts and show you how the box integrates with each and every one of them. Again, I believe the box is a great standalone concept that makes sense, but you know, tennis, there's so many pieces to the puzzle. We wanna show you how that all works together. Okay, so we're gonna start from square one, right as you see the ball off the split step. The first move you should make is your unit turn to get your shoulders and your hips turned together as, as a unit. You see that? And this should be the first thing that you do even before you take your first step to the ball. Immediately, this should happen right here. Now, your unit turn with your racket up in a nice strong box, that is equivalent to early racket preparation, okay? Now, I, I do a separate video on this. I'll link you to it above or below in the channel, but I, don't confuse early racket preparation with racket take back like this. Those are two completely separate things. So when I get my, my early racket prep, I actually, my, I'm gonna keep my hands in front of my body and it kind of looks like a little bit of optical illusion. I'm not moving my arms back like this, I'm just turning my body. See how my hands are still in front of me? It's right here. I'm not using my arms yet to take my, my racket back to the side of me, okay? And now when I'm in, in this position, obviously if the ball is coming really fast, I'm gonna go right into my loop and accelerate into the ball. But what holding right here allows me to do is if the ball is slow, I can wait, 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 and then accelerate into the ball. And what I want is I want to use this the drop of the loop. I want to gain momentum from the loop to accelerate into the ball with one continuous acceleration. If I wait with my hands down here and I'm waiting for the ball, I lose that excel I lose the, the drop and that extra momentum into the ball. And that's part of the reason why we get the hands up and out and wait right here if needed. So just on these simple fed back hands where I have a little extra time, I'm gonna get turned super fast, but I'm just gonna wait. You see that racket really still. I try to keep it as still as possible. Well, that, that timing was bad, so I gotta time it a little bit better. Okay, but that's good timing. But I'm using that drop of the racket, of course, to that little extra bit of momentum. You've probably seen club players uh, this is more so a beginner intermediate level. Take that racket back super early, and while it's good at a low level, at a high level, you know, you won't be able to do that. Not very many people can, but again, that hold and then fire in one smooth, continuous acceleration. Now, the second issue with early racket take back is it's very hard for me to run like this on balance, right? Okay. It's much easier to run with my hands in front. So when I get my unit turn and keep my hands up and, and with a nice strong box in front of me, see how I'm moving with my hands in front of my body? All right. And that's a big difference. And of course, I want to do my best to keep this racket as still as possible as I'm moving. So this allows me again, so I can wait, wait, wait. All right. And I'm not early. So Ideally, guys, your, your unit turn and your racket prep should be as early as possible, right away instantaneous. But your racket take back and your backswing should be timed with the ball, okay? It's a really big distinction. I know a little repetitive, but it's a big distinction. And most players don't really realize that when you hit the ball, there's not just one turn. There are two turns when you hit. So the first turn is the unit turn that we talked about. The second turn is actually the coil back and uncoil. So watch, split step, one turn in the unit turn, and then two turns, you see that? So I can wait here after the first turn, and then go into the, the second turn, and that second turn initiates a swing. I'll show you from the side. Split, one turn, two turns. So when I'm here in that unit turn, I'll actually wait and then go back a little bit more, see right here, right? I won't wait in this position. If I waited back here, it kind of looked like that, right? you know, which is incorrect if I'm waiting for the ball. 
Okay, so we're gonna dedicate a separate video to just pure rotation, but I wanna show you, again, how the box really works with this concept. Now before we move forward, I wanna clarify because in the last video I talked about the two heads rule where you keep your head and your racket head still as you run with the box out in front, just kind of like that. Now there are scenarios where it works better than others. Okay, so if the ball isn't very far away like that one, where it's, you're taking two or three steps, you can get that racket out and still to stabilize. But if you're running a longer distance like there, it's very hard to run, obviously with those arms straight out and still. Okay, so if you're running a longer distance, do not do that, is you're just making life a little tougher. What you're actually going to do, again, one more incorrect demo, what you're actually going to do over these next few running backhands, you're gonna run with the elbows a little closer in, but as you approach the ball, then you get the arms a little further out in that strong box position. All right, and those last two are terrible timing. I got time one good for you guys. Sometimes I don't get it on the first try. Okay, now that's better timing. But what you're gonna see, and I'm gonna show you some different footworks, is a little closer to my body, and then for a split second, it's gonna get out and still right before I swing. But it's gonna be very subtle, right there. So when I say there, that means I'm gonna to try to keep it stabilized. Right there. Okay, let's go one more right there, right before I accelerate. This one's really easy to see, and then he gets that box up. But just Federer's sort of normal rally ball, again, he's not running with those uh, arms extended. He'll get it extended at the last moment, but again, right before he hits, he does keep that racket pretty still. Okay, still, and then he fires. Okay, so now that we put that behind us, we can focus on the two turns. And on my backhand, it is a little bit more subtle. I think it's subtle in general because it happens so fast. That little extra coil right there, okay? That weight and then a little bit more coil. And we'll show you in slow-mo in a sec. And then I fire pretty fast, so I typically don't, don't coil back that much further. All right, so here's the first turn. And so watch when my shoulders face the screen, right about there. And then see they're angled back even a little bit more and then boom, okay? And it's that little extra, it might even be maybe 30 degrees back extra that help you get that coil back and then it snaps right back to neutral. Again, we're gonna do slow-mo and then freeze it right about there. I'm already turned, watch my shoulders go back just a touch more and then right there, turn back even more into the coil. So for most of you guys, Okay, I know I get my box out to the side. Just one more clarification. Some of you guys who get a lot of shoulder turn are gonna be getting the box a lot further back. So I'm doing this exaggerated turn back. I normally don't hit my backhand like this, but I know some people do. So instead of the box to the side, again, the box is further back there, right? But I'm not taking my arms back all the way. I have a little bit more to go to turn and unwind. So, very similar to a lot of people, Langton Hewitt, because he takes a bigger swing than Fed, you see his rackets further behind him and it's hard to see, but when you watch other players, you'll notice. All right, now guys, on the last video, we also talked about when you're setting up for your shots to hold your racket as still as possible like this in your hand, and that's stabilizing before you hit. But what also holding your shot like this in that box and holding it still does, is it allows you to freeze your opponent, right? So you can disguise your shot, hitting left or right. And Roger Federer is probably the best in the world at this because number one, he holds still, he's so balanced, and then he accelerates hard from a very still position. So, you know, it's impossible to really to read where he's hitting. Now, it does take a little bit more energy to hold, 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 and accelerate fast and accelerate hard. But also if you're playing Roger and you're playing him and you have to, and you can't tell where he's reading, you have to move from a still position or make these sudden jerky movements, that's also incredibly tiring as well, okay? So what Roger also does on top of that is from 
him holding his box right here, he, he even shortens his swing. And when he shortens his swing like this, right, for that, that put away ball, when he's holding his shot, it comes off his racket so fast. So it's like, boom, right, right away. It, it's so hard to read that. Compared to some players take a much bigger loop and a longer swing. And the thing with taking a bigger swing is you have to make up your mind where you're hitting before you, before you actually take your swing. So if I take a bigger swing like this, just that extra split second will telegraph to my opponent and my opponent can already start making a move to the ball, all right? So, you know, shortening your swing, that it's, it's a separate topic in and of itself, but what the box allows you to do is shorten your swing if you choose to do so. So these first style of putaways that he's demoing is a bigger, slower swing. And this is how he would normally practice and put balls away in matches. It's just the level that, you know, we're playing at at our level, we don't really need that quick release. So this is good, but it's a little easy to read, okay, because of that slightly bigger loop, especially if his spacing isn't great. Now here's that quick release. He's just gonna hold a little bit longer Hold and fire, and that ball's gonna come off the racket really, really quickly. Like that one right there was great, okay? Now this does take a little bit of extra strength to fire that racket really fast. Take a lot of core strength, and you can see, you don't if you hit, don't hit practice this that much, or strength, and this can get a little quite tiring, okay? But because it comes off the racket so fast, it can be lethal. Now, I want to bring this concept up because I know I, I tell people, okay, hold the box strong right here and have one clean continuous acceleration right from the box. Please do not misinterpret that as you need to shorten your swing, okay? For most players, you're gonna hold right here in the box and still take your slightly bigger backswing. But again, you can shorten your swing if you need to, but don't screw your rhythm up. And we'll do a separate video on shortening or lengthening your swing, but don't screw your rhythm up by doing the box and intentionally shortening your swing because that's what I see a lot of players end up doing and then it kind of throws them off, you know, in the short term. All right, so thank you guys for getting this far in the video. I know it had a bunch of eclectic different concepts, but everything was really focused on integrating strength with everything you do. And I know I say this all the time, right, because using strength is more tiring, but the reason why we have a gas tank is to be able to deplete that gas tank and leave your opponent in the dust. So when I'm playing a match and you know I, I deliberately want to raise my level and hit a heavier ball and start holding my shot longer and longer and longer, yes, it is towering, but really that's the result we eventually want to get. I understand if you, know, if you have really bad technique or you're doing some weird things, that's a different issue. But if you have good technique, which is the efficient use of energy, all right, put that well-oiled machine into hyperdrive, right? Take your game to the next level. It's definitely the right thing to do. So thanks so much. I appreciate you uh, getting this far in the video. Like and subscribe. It helps the channel so much. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode for a bunch, for a lot more exciting things.